As they wait for their food to arrive, Suzanne pops the question she'd been waiting to ask face to face. So Charles, why don't you go to church? A bit taken aback, he pauses before replying, Well, I used to, but I kind of grew out of it. What do you mean you grew out of it? Well, I got to a point where I just couldn't keep ignoring the facts. What facts? Are you sure you want to hear this? Yes, go on. Well, when I was a boy, my father was my greatest influence. He made sure I learned all about the black heroes who had dedicated their lives to liberating black people from white oppression, like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey and Kwame Nkrumah. Having strong black male figures in my life meant I didn't have to look to a white man to save me. I don't look to a white man to save me either, Suzanne butts in. Are you sure? When you think of Jesus, what colour is he? I don't see any colour, she replies flippantly. Charles asks Suzanne to close her eyes before saying the name Jesus. Now tell me, what do you see? Suzanne opens her eyes and stares at him blankly. Hey, I'm not saying I don't believe in Jesus, Charles assures her. It's just that I have a problem with the white image they portray. Does it matter what colour he was? She asks defensively. Of course it does. This white Jesus image has caused major damage to our people's psyche. Now it's like we can't do anything without the white man. Even our African leaders rely on him for things they should have been able to do for themselves. That's why Africa, our motherland, is in such a mess. Wait! How did we get talking about Africa when the question was, why don't you go to church? Charles takes a deep breath before replying, Suzanne, I'd rather not fall out with you over religion. I just want to know why you don't, don't go to church, that's all. He sighs deeply again. Okay, so I grew up with a pan-Africanist father and a Christian mother. I spent the first 10 years of my life being raised in my father's village in Ghana. When he died, my mother returned to England where they first met. She carried on taking us to church, but I never forgot the stories my father told me about how religion was used to steal the wealth of Africa. Suzanne laughs sarcastically. How was religion used to steal the wealth of Africa? Charles retells a story his father had told him of how European missionaries arrived in Africa in the early 1800s with thousands of Bibles claiming to spread the gospel. In truth, their mission was to use religion to mentally enslave those natives who had escaped the transatlantic slave trade. They were forced to believe their African spirituality was evil and that they needed to be saved. In the 1600s, Christianity had been whipped into enslaved Africans who didn't accept it willingly but there were still plenty of Africans who practiced their own spirituality. In order for their plan to succeed, Europeans had to convince Africans that they needed a white saviour and that they shouldn't desire earthly treasures. This would make it easy for them to usurp the wealth-creating resources of their land. By tricking Africans into believing that they should live a humble life on earth and wait until they got to heaven to receive riches untold, they were able to walk away laughing with their gold, diamonds, oil and other natural resources. Charles recalls an African proverb his father used to say, They had the Bible and we had the land. Now we have the Bible and they have the land. Surely Christianity isn't that bad. Lots of people benefit from having something to believe in. Suzanne defends her faith. Maybe but your ancestors suffered and died because of it. They were lynched on trees and now you're expected to forget about them and worship a white saviour who hung on a wooden cross for you instead. You were stripped of your identity and told you have a new identity in Christ. Where did your surname come from? What do you mean? Well, it's not African, so how did you get it? It's my family name. No, it's a slave trader's name. Your ancestors' names, language, culture, spirituality, their very identity was stripped from them. They were bought and sold, branded and sold like cattle. You should learn your history, Suzanne. You're a displaced African. You should find your roots. I wouldn't even know where to start. Well, maybe you could start by visiting Ghana with me. Most of the enslaved Africans were transported from there. They're your ancestors. 
Me? Visit Africa? I don't think so. Why not? Well, for one, I don't like the idea of sleeping in a mud hut. And all those flies. You watch too much tell vision. They only show you those images to stop you from going back home to your motherland. Africa isn't my home. I'm Jamaican. Charles sighs deeply and placing his hand over hers on the table says, It's a shame to see how disconnected the descendants of enslaved Africans are from their ancestral roots. If you want, I can help you find your way back home.